I'm turning 30 this year. So I wanted to do something kind of special for my birthday, uh, and I decided on this crazy idea to write some original music and bring some friends of mine to Pachyderm Recording Studio in Minnesota. We're going to be going over my birthday weekend, which is October 7th. It's maybe my favorite place on earth. It's a studio and a house that are nestled in the middle of the woods. The studio itself is famous because uh, Nirvana recorded there in 1993. They recorded in utero. Having experienced that place a few times before, I can say that there's something about the house and the studio that, you know, it's really, it's just a magical place. So I'm bringing uh, my wife and our son and my parents are coming along and bringing some of my good friends who also happen to be incredible musicians. We had our first rehearsal today and it went really well. And I'm just kind of counting down the days at this point. So uh, I'm going to make this little video and kind of chronicle just the whole experience and try and capture as much of the energy of that place as I can. So here we go. I would say come in right there. Good thing we filmed that one! <laughs> Dude, like, Jeremy shits out hits. That's basically what Jeremy does. He just goes home, he's like, there's a hit. <laughs> How did he think of that? It just ends, man. It just ends. Not doing great right now, guys. So, yeah, night before the trip, started feeling not so great, scratchy throat, turned into a little bit of a cough and a headache, took a test, and uh, yeah, COVID positive. So needless to say, I spent my birthday weekend in a pretty deep depression, honestly. As we got closer and closer, I just kept thinking, somebody's gonna get COVID or get sick with something right before we go. I had the car packed up, I put new strings on all my guitars, got all the camera equipment all ready to go, and the night before, of course. But it's okay, I'm clawing myself out of this depression. We've got a rescheduled studio date on the books. We're going the second week of November now, which is gonna be great. But one of the things I'm really bummed about is I was really excited to go see the studio in early October because all the trees around right now are turning these beautiful colors and I was so excited to see the studio in that environment. I think it's still gonna be good. You know, who knows, maybe I'll have some time to write a new song, you know, maybe just like an acoustic song or something I can take with in case we have some extra time. Guess we're just gonna have to wait a little bit. Fingers crossed that it doesn't happen again and we can actually make this one work. Never come out. But there's 
Well, we finally made it. It's so surreal being back in this house. For the past few months leading up to this trip, I have been consuming every piece of pachyderm-related media I could find. You know, just trying to get a sense for what it was like. But being here in the house and just the smell of the house and the smell of outside and just the entire vibe in here is exactly the way I remember it. There's such a just inspiring creative air about this place. And immediately you walk in here and you're just in a calm, relaxed mood. And it's it's just perfect. Wouldn't happen, so thank you for coming out. Uh, it's gonna be a great weekend. I just implore all of you guys to enjoy the house and the property and the studio as much as you can because Honestly, I, I have said this a lot, but this is my favorite place on earth. All of you are here for a reason, so if you're standing here, it means I love you, and I want to share that experience with you. It's going to be good. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 One of the most important parts of this process was selecting the right players. I had to find the right people to bring with me that not only would be able to perform on these songs and bring their own style and flavor into them, but would also be able to appreciate what Pachyderm was. I brought my friend Rich, who is an incredible drummer. I've come to know Rich as not only one of the most technically incredibly skilled drummers, but he is just such a nice, vibrant presence. And not only that, his wife Angela is outstanding, and she loves to be a part of it just as much as he does, and they're just fantastic people. I knew that he would put the preparation and the work into doing what needed to be done on these songs. And so when I wrote the demos and sent out the songs to these guys, I specifically didn't put any drums on them because I wanted to hear what he would come up with. I wanted to see what he would add to them, and what I got was not only complex and intricate and interesting drum beats, but they really served the songs. I think the most enjoyable part of writing and contributing on the drum side is you know, really trying to think more about what you're doing with the song. These songs are great songs on their own, so it becomes my job to try to bring that out. I've been reflecting a little bit this morning after being here for a couple of days and like so you're in this building and relaxation, inspiration, camaraderie, right? All the great people we got here. And then walk across the way and you got pure professionalism. It's just a cool blend of all of those things at the same time. So dude, I'm having a blast. So then on bass, 
right away the person who came to mind was my cousin Jacob. Jacob is just one of the all-around most talented musicians I've ever known. Not only can he play bass incredibly well, he's equally skilled on the guitar and even as a drummer. His ideas, I don't know where they come from. It's kind of infuriating actually. He's so naturally gifted and creative. And I don't know if it's the same way for him, but every time he releases new music that he's written and produced, I listen to it and I'm just blown away. And immediately it makes me want to become better at my craft. And I think it's really important to have that source of outside force uh, that, that kind of pushes you to expand on your knowledge and on your abilities. He is a never ending source of great ideas. Being in the studio and the way that live room feels and sounds, is kind of magical and it was just really fun to like explore you know all the creative ideas we had you know within those two days like you're kind of isolated in a way a little bit you're not thinking about anything else but you're like you're here to record music and then come back and just chill you know hang out in the pool somebody makes food whatever it is and you just hang out and it was awesome i knew going into this that i wanted to have a second guitar player. I didn't want to do all the guitars and I mean to fill out the guest list I knew I wanted to have uh, another couple to bring along so I asked my friend Mike Jimenez to play guitar on the project. Mike used to play guitar in bands years ago. By his own admission he kind of retired from music for a while but I knew that he was a good musician because I know his music tastes and I know he is great at picking out reasons why he loves certain songs. I put a lot of heart and soul into my music. I know the other guys do, and I wanted to find someone that could not just see it as a piece of music that he had to perform, but really get attached to the songs and, and want to put that work into it. But it was kind of to pull him out of retirement. Uh, Jeremy had sent us a couple uh, demos and I mean, just even the demos without any drums, without any real production behind them other than just kind of home recording. I really thought there was something really special with them. Coming out here and playing it in the studio, at least for me, you know, I've, I have a pretty low amount of experience in these kinds of situations in the studio in general, let alone a studio of this caliber. If you want to flag that take for the outro, for me, I felt really good about that one. I don't know if I'll hit it that well again. I don't know why it just didn't occur to me. It was like, okay, Mike, play guitar for a minute. And I'm, st I'm standing there with the guitar, everything's on, and I'm like, what the hell do I play? I'm like, I gotta play for like five minutes straight just to get all the tones dialed in, and I just hadn't thought of that moment. I remember I was just like, oh boy, I'm, this, I'm so out of my element here, and this is gonna be just ridiculous. One of the things about Mike is that sometimes he gets inside his own head a little bit and suffers from imposter syndrome. I'm nervous. Never been in a studio like this. I just made a Facebook post like imposter syndrome level 10 out of 10. Will you stop it, Mike? Dude, I'm serious. <laughs> you are worthy. It wasn't my intention to pull him out of his comfort zone at all, but I kind of hoped that this experience would at least show him that he is a good enough musician, first of all, to hang in an environment like that, despite his anxiety going into it. As soon as we got in there and started tracking, I mean, I, he nailed most of those songs almost right away. The way we did it, recording as a live band, all in the same room it, you capture that feeling of you know just jamming that's the best feeling is like just getting in a room and jamming you know everybody getting stoked and you're like yeah yeah that's how we're gonna do it and then you go back into the control room and listen and it's like better than you even heard in your head uh, nick uh, you know the producer was very very easy to work with i think he, he's he, he has a talent of like saying the right thing to the right person of what they need to feel comfortable. And that's a different thing for every person. I think Nick does a really good job of keeping you patient, but also moving things along, because, you know, we're we're a little distracted sometimes. We're goofy. What is this, 200, 200 bucks? I'm shredding. 250, okay, that's what I thought. Wasn't ready. I'm not gonna be singing on this. Is that before tax? Enough of the, like, snarly sound. I only need to use this tambourine for one song. It's gonna be a business mogul. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm ready. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll keep doing this forever. Humans are weird, man. There's a whole table full of deliciousness here. The kitchen brigade. Um, <laughs> I've got the best uh, cooking partner in the world right here. So. Get a shot of that breakfast. We have. Yeah. I know. That's what I'm doing it's here. Yeah. How else do okay. you think you can hit all those fills every time? Studio energy is what it is. <laughs> Mario, you like your breakfast? So we completed day one tracking yesterday. It went better than I could have ever imagined. We got all of the band tracking done. And I even got some vocals put down, and they sound great, and I'm so excited about it. Today is the second and final day of tracking, so I'm going to finish up vocals, and we're going to do some guitar and bass overdubs, and maybe put some harmonies on. appreciate most is the quality of the musicianship. I think it's really cool um, to I don't know, get some material and, and have some creative input um, and then to get here and realize everybody else has done their homework with creative input. You know I'm not I'm not too superstitious or, or spiritual in that way but there is still like a vibe associated with a place like this just knowing kind of you know obviously you know the, the first band that comes to mind is Nirvana you know recording in utero here there's been others just to have that sort of pedigree of bands to, that have been here before us um, I don't know it feels like almost like a responsibility to, to take this seriously and, and try and do a good job with it. I think Jeremy wrote three awesome songs that are, are seriously cool and Beyond that, allowed you know everybody to have creative freedom to add, and you know have suggestions. I liked being in the control room, especially during the recording the harmonies for Heaven. I remember you know having a couple ideas then, 
being cool with that kind of uh, collaboration is, is kind of what I live for. And I mean, the goal from the beginning was like to support the song and just uh, basically, hopefully make the whole thing better. Each of the songs in this project are lyrically heavily inspired by things that were going on in my life or things that I was feeling around the time that, you know, we decided to, to book this trip and everything. I wanted to make sure that came through on the lyrics. So the song Heaven, the lyrics to that one probably came the most naturally to me. Heaven is a song about a time in my life that happened over this summer. I had so many things going on and all of them were positive, but it doesn't matter how good something is, if you have too much of it, eventually you'll become exhausted. And I started dealing with pretty intense anxiety and stress. And eventually it got to a point where I had to take a step back and I was really struggling. And heaven is about just kind of that thing that you can put out there and say, if this is, if this is it, if I'm not going to make it any further than this, at least I can get here and at least I'll have this to look back on. The Eyes Have It is <laughs> by far the heaviest song we wrote. I tend to write things that are, are pretty melodic and have a lot of contrast uh, and dynamics lyrically. But this one is just sort of an all ahead rager. All hope is lost. It started with the just the opening line or the opening idea, I guess, of the eyes having it. And all you can do is watch and ask why, but you know why. Sometimes there's not anything you can do about that. Uh, there's a lot of imagery and things there that can be interpreted a number of different ways. That song really took on the, the biggest departure from what I initially had envisioned in my head. Once the band got a hold of it and we really started jamming it together, it just became this totally other song. I'm really happy with the way that one turned out. I think that was the best one. Pressure is a song that's written about something that happens to me that, that I get irrationally angry about. It's a situation where somebody says, you should have known. If you were following along, you probably saw we going wrong. And heaven knows there's no way out. You should have known going into this that this was going to happen. Why didn't you prepare for that? possibility. When in reality, I mean, the way life works is you just kind of flow into experiences. And sometimes no matter how much thought or preparation you put into a decision, there's always going to be something you didn't think of. And there's always going to be somebody to tell you that one thing you didn't think of, you should have thought of. Can you You know, people conveniently wait until something has gone horribly wrong to tell you, oh, you should have just thought of this. It's frustrating. So I decided to express it in a song. You should have known when you know just as well as I No one ever gets this right Only when my chance is gone You tell me what you would have done Is your Oh, 
comfy spot and I'll move all this stuff to you. So I had been kicking around the idea in my head after the first trip was postponed due to COVID. I had a little extra time and I thought it would be great if we had enough time in the studio that I could just write an acoustic song. With that in mind, I decided to write a song about Pachyderm and about the house and about the studio and about its history and everything. It was really a great opportunity for me to get to connect to the experience on another level. Writing it here at home, I was thinking about my previous experiences there, what the place meant to me as a memory. And then to get to perform that song in the studio and record it in the studio, I, I created another attachment. I created a new memory out of it. It's all about that feeling that is proving really hard to describe, actually. And sometimes that's the great thing about music. Sometimes you can express something through song in a way that you couldn't normally. I'm glad I had the opportunity to to actually get to record that one and to write that song. I think it's a good way to cap off the whole project. People are becoming farther apart. When you get everybody in the same place at the same time, I, I, I believe that's really, really special. I think that whole place is, it just felt like a petri dish for creative ideas. And it was awesome. Uh, we do it again. <laughs> if you're still searching, and you haven't found a place you belong in, I'm sure it's around so Thank you, Jeremy, for uh, in inviting me out here to be part of this. All, all, all four of us, actually, I think, I feel this, or all three of us feel the same way towards you for, for inviting us out here and, and doing this whole thing together. Let's do it again. truly is, it was and still is, my favorite place on earth and I was so happy that I got to bring everyone here and I hope that they appreciated it as much as I did. But I can't imagine much better than this, oh no.
it was just perfect. Uh, every bit of that weekend was just perfect. Everyone had a great time. We squeezed every ounce of enjoyment out of that weekend that we possibly could. And I seriously don't think it could have gone any better. I chose exactly the right people to come along for the trip and I genuinely think every single one of them got out of it exactly what I hoped. They all walked away with an amazing experience and they all walked away saying, wow, this place is really something special. Every time I leave there, every time I've been to Pachyderm Studios and it's my last day and I'm packing up to leave, I take one more look around the house and I take one more look around the studio and I say to myself, I hope this isn't the last time I come here. And it's true, I genuinely hope it isn't. And I don't think it will be. <laughs> Uh, probably the most humble guy you know. Um, I want to just start by saying the other interviews probably won't be nearly as good. So I, I want to just apologize to everybody in advance if that's okay. You know, maybe the, the humblest rhythm section you'll ever find in rock and roll. Like, I'm trying to think of another one right now. I can't. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, like, so humble. I, I mean, you could ask anyone how humble me and Rich are in... in They'll they'll tell you that we've told them that like how humble we are. It's it's insane. Just don't take it